So for the scenarios today, I'm going to be playing the part of a manager of a large healthcare uh, conglomerate. Uh, we do both software and we also sell products directly to medical centers, hospitals, etc., all the way down from x-ray machines to bedpans. And the team that I run are a bunch of cloud administrators and SDC managers, right? So the guys that are really in the weeds and fixing things, right? And I just got a phone call from uh, a couple of the VPs. They were on a, on a conversation and they would like to create a new PAC system. The PAC system is, you know, uh, uh, MRIs, X-rays, CAT scans, et cetera, being able to pull that data in, pull that, push that data out, and they want to start talking about selling that to some of their smaller uh, medical groups, right? So they've said basically, look, hey, in the next uh, month or so, uh, I, we're going to need to have a, an environment built for about 30 new developers, uh, and that's going to go on for about six months. Dave, go off and let me know if that can run in the, uh, in the California data center under the development uh, cluster. So what do I do? First thing I do is I don't panic. I go to Virali's operations, right? And I go to the new planning tab, right? And you can see these are all the new uh, components, the new ways we can do planning that Taruna was talking about, right? So 99% uh, of my infrastructure is already on vSAN. I'm already on HCI hyperconverged. So I now have the ability to run workload planning scenarios, host, add, remove, all on that HCI, uh, all across those ACI, uh, excuse me, HCI clusters. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and run a, uh, a workload planning for add VMs, and I'm going to give it a name, the new project PAX development, and I'm going to choose my data center. In this case, I'm going to choose my Santa Clara data center, as he requested, and I'm going to look at the clusters in Santa Clara, and I've got two. Basically, I've got my tier one, you know, business critical application cluster, not really a good place to start doing development, and I've got kind of my test dev environment. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that one. Hopefully it'll fit there. And now I can choose, you know, is this, are these brand new workloads or is there a workload out there that kind of mimics it? Because I can always take a template and say, this is what I want to look at. But honestly, I'm just going to kind of spitball it and say, you know, I'm going to look at two CPUs, you know, four gigs of memory and, you know, about 100 gig of disk space. And there's a couple of new tabs here or a couple of new pieces of information I can add. The first is expected utilization, right? I could spec that out. There's no way every developer is going to use every single CPU and every bit of memory as it goes, right? And certainly not all the disk space. So I can say, you know what? I can't imagine they're going to be using more than 60% when they start. And then the other piece I have is I can have an annual growth. I know there's going to be more and more development going on throughout the course of this year, right? Or at the six months. So I'm going to say over the next year, maybe they'll have 25% growth, right? So that all gets calculated in. Then I just need to figure out how many... They said about 30 developers. I'm going to guess about three VMs for each developer. So let's round it up a little bit and say 100. Right? Now I get to go to the HCI or the vSAN section, right? So now I have configurations where I can now configuring, uh, start configuring the storage side of this. So I can say, let's account for SWAT space. I can say the number of hosts I'm willing to tolerate failures for. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say two. I can choose my RAID levels, RAID 1, RAID 6, RAID 5, etc. Go ahead and choose RAID 6. I can even do, do my dedupe. Uh, levels in this case. Now all I need to do, now that I've filled out all of the pieces that are necessary for the scenario, all I really need to do is just pick a start date. Well, he said sometime next month, so I'm going to go ahead and say the middle of September, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and run that scenario. Now it's going to go off and it's going to check that environment and say, is there space? And oh, gosh, there's not, right? I'm not even close. I'm about 200 gigahertz of CPU short and almost two terabytes of disk space short. Right? So it's going to come up right away and say, hey, the cluster that you've chosen and the data, store, and the data uh, center that you've chosen does not have the space for that. Now, this is where I get options. Normally, I'd go back and say it doesn't fit. Right? But now Virilize Operations is going to walk me through the different options that I can come back to uh, the VPs and say, look, it didn't fit. Here's what we can do. You guys help me decide which is the best way to do it. One of the options is, does it fit in any of the other clusters in that data center? Well, I really don't want to put it in my tier one cluster, but it doesn't fit anyways, right? It's still very short on both CPU and on disk space. The next step is, what if I do, what if I do uh, VMC on AWS, right? What if I move it out there and uh, start expanding into the hybrid cloud? We've talked about doing that a number of times before. All I need to do to do that is just click learn more and it's gonna run a quick assessment to say, does it fit? And how many hosts would I need? Right? And it's going to come back and say, you're going to need four hosts based on your HCI uh, requirements and based on the number of workloads you're talking about. And it's going to say, you know, they're going to be about half full. 
So I'm not gonna really fill those hosts up all the way. And it's gonna give me costs for both on demand, one year, three year, right? And then it's gonna let me know, hey, you know, it's gonna cost 12,000 a month, but you're only using half of, about half of it. So it really, just those workloads alone are gonna cost about 5,000. All right, I can take that information, put it in my back pocket. There's one thing I can go back with, right? The other thing I can do is what if I just get off of vSphere and go native, AWS for instance, right? So I can go start looking at other public clouds. If I could choose Amazon and AWS, I can choose the region I'm interested in, in this case, California, and it's gonna give me a price right there, right? It's using the rate cards from AWS to give me that price. I can choose other clouds as well, IBM Cloud, I can choose Azure, I can choose the region and say, you know, I can continue adding these. And if I have my own cloud provider, Bob's House of Clouds, you know, I can take his rate card and put it right in here and give him a cool little icon of Bob doing this, and I can just continue that way, right? So I can add this. So there's another piece that I can take and put in my back pocket, right? The last one is I can also come down here and I can actually look at other data centers, right? I've got a lot of data centers across the globe. Would this be better fitting in another data center, right? So it does a quick data center compare, right? And looks at my other private clouds. Would it fit in the Washington DC vSAN environment? Would it fit in the Wenatchee data center? Would it fit in Hong Kong, would it fit, et cetera? So I can go across there and say, here, look, it's not gonna fit in the California data center. Here's some of the other options, right? So I've been given at least three options now. There's one option that we really haven't explored yet. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one, save this scenario. The other option we haven't explored is what if I can get new hardware? Right? This is a pretty important project. Maybe they'll let me buy new hardware. There's always, always the first place to go, right? Ask for more hardware if you can do it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start up a scenario for adding new Project Pasks hardware. And I'm gonna choose my Santa Clara data center and that cluster, and then I'm gonna select the server. Now, by default, it's gonna tell me, look, this is the server type that's in there. You're gonna wanna add the same type of server, right? But I can go and filter out and say Dell, or HP or anything else I want. And it happens to be Cisco UCS that's running in that environment right now in that cluster. Right? It also has the cost associated with it. Now costs are gonna come up later, but you notice there's a lot of costs, a lot of dollar signs that VROps has been providing for us, right? That's that deep integration that we pulled in from VRBC or we've taken from VRBC and put it into VROps, right? To be able to do hybrid cloud costs. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my Cisco UCS and I'm gonna spitball it and say, three hosts, right? And then I'm gonna make it complete make-believe and I'm gonna say I can get it by the end of the week. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, when I made the demo, it wasn't so close to this time, but yeah, you know what I mean. I don't go ahead and run that scenario. Now it's gonna come back and say, okay, great, you can add new hosts if you'd like. And what it's gonna show me is, let's just use CPU as the example. So this CPU, in the current cluster, it's pretty flat. There, there's things going on, but there's not a lot of spikes. So it's saying the current trend is pretty flat. Right, and I'm only using maybe about two thirds of the resources. And here's my current resource line, right, for CPU. And after I, on September 1st, when I get all those new hosts and rack them and stack them overnight, because I can do that, uh, you see there's a bump, right? There's my extra resources that I'm looking for. Okay, great, that was fine. It's also gonna tell me, you know, the total cost, 52 grand, right? So I can take that, put that in my back pocket. But before I do that, I really wanna go back to my boss and say, is this a good idea, right? So let's go and, do what's called stack these scenarios on top of each other. And this is really one of the big power plays of vRealize operations. I can take the hardware and the new VMs that I'm gonna need, and I can stack them on top of each other and run that scenario together, right? So there's when the new hardware shows up, here's when the developers need those new VMs, and I can run that scenario, right? It takes a couple of seconds, and it comes back and says, hey, guess what? If you do this, you're gonna be able to last for 285 days, which is well past the six month marker that, that, uh, that the VPs had given me, right? And here's what I'm looking at, right? Here's the current trend of CPU, right? Here's where I get the new hosts, right? This line here is when I start spinning up all 100 of those VMs, and then this slope is at 25% growth, right? And I can look at this across CPU, memory, disk space, et cetera, right? So now I can go back to that, uh, to that VP, and say, hey, guess what? Here's your options, right? Yes, it didn't fit, but we can go to VMware Cloud and AWS. Here's what this would cost. You said we wanted to do that at some day. This is not, might, might not be a bad time to do it. We can also extend our public cloud footprint. You wanna do that for a development, right? Here's the cost of that. Other data centers, maybe, 
There's, here's the cost of those, right? And oh, by the way, if we just get that hardware and we, we can continue to use that hardware, here's the cost of that and we can have it done and that can make sure that it goes past 285 days. Is that enough time for you to finish your development? Yes, it is, great, right? So we've had a, a really intelligent conversation with uh, the higher ups at that point. Now we've been talking a lot about costs, right? So costs are all over the place in VLI's operation. How does that work, right? So costs come in from our cost reference database. You have control over that. So if you say, hey, I don't spend that much on Cisco or I get a deal from Dell or whatever it is, you can go in and adjust those. Same thing with the cost drivers. So we have a number of different cost drivers in the system. You can add things like licensing, maintenance, labor costs, facilities costs, uh, et cetera. Anything that you really need to be able to uh, track from a cost standpoint, you can just end, uh, add in another line item and you can do it at the data center level, at the cluster level, or globally, however you need to do it. Once those get in, then depending on what type of modeling you're using for your costing, what type of depreciation you're using, how many years of depreciation you like to use, et cetera, VRALI's operations is gonna calculate CPU, memory, and storage base rates. And then it's just a matter of that, C, that VM's using this much, therefore it costs this much or this VM is allocated this much, therefore it costs this much. And that's how the, everything gets calculated from the other side, not the I'm gonna buy it side, but how much is this costing and can I, can I show the business how much it's actually using from a, from a pricing standpoint. And then you get great things like this. And again, Truna mentioned how we can do things like custom reports, custom dashboards, et cetera, but we give you a lot of different things out of the box. So here's the assessed cost page, right? So I've got six data centers, 98, uh, 98 hosts, 25 clusters, and I'm, I'm running at about $100,000 a month right now. Some of our costs are kind of tweaked because Brandon's tweaking them in the background all the time to try to get cool you know, pop-up numbers because our environment isn't that huge. But there's all my different data centers as well. And you can see the total cost of the clusters, the storage, the VM direct costs, things like licensing, things like labor. And I can even get like, you know, uh, hey, you know, you're gonna have clusters and environments that are more expensive than others, which is the most expensive. That's how that, that bottom line of when I did the compare across my private data centers, how it came up with that, right? I can even get to the point of, let's break it down by each data center. And each data center, I can click on a data center and see the hardware, licensing, et cetera, uh, or even down to the, the, the price of the host. And then what's really neat is, Here's what I was talking about before. Just you're looking at CPU, memory, and storage across those different heat maps, right? So here's one that's showing you the price, the base rate of a CPU. How much does a CPU cost in this cluster in this data center? I wanna know, right? And then the other number is, right? So that's the size of the box, and the color of the box is really how much money are you not using in that cluster? I, some people like to call that waste. I consider, I like looking at it as half full, half empty. I look at it as space to grow, right? And so you can look at it across these different ones. This one's got a much higher CPU rate. Maybe the, maybe the, the hardware is more expensive, maybe it's newer, et cetera, right? And we can do that across different types of methodologies, uh, uh, base rates, uh, demand, allocation, et cetera. Yay.